And welcome back to another BAM blog breakdown with Brian Kaiser, Aaron Zambrano, and me, Mike Calder, break down expert business blogs so you can better understand and apply the information to your business and life for real results and who doesn't want real results. Before we get started, we urge you, urge you to get over to the YouTube channel and subscribe to our channel. It's a simple click of a button. This will do two things for you. It will allow you to review all our past blogs, this blog, which we do all of these blogs in such a bam slamming, fun, cool, energetic way. And the second thing it'll do is keep you in the loop. It'll notify you when we have new episodes coming out and all that good stuff. YouTube's made it super simple. Click a button, boom, you're subscribed. You don't have to do anything else, then you're in the loop. You gotta be in the loop. You gotta be in the loop, right? Okay. I am your humbled co-host, Mike Calder. I'm here with my BAM brothers, Brian Kaiser and Aaron Zambrano, Mr. Fit himself and the world's greatest connector. Brian, world's greatest connector, how are you this morning? I am once again blessed and highly favored back from another great weekend and I'm uh, you know we got another great blog this is gonna be so much fun it is absolutely Aaron's back again Aaron is a regular part of the show we're loving it he has a great 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 spin input and insight for us each and every week Aaron how are you today I am wonderful I had an amazing weekend with family and friends and ready to get this episode going awesome well when I think about the three of us the BAM brothers right BAM B-A-M Brian, Aaron, Mike, I think, man, how could we get so much energy in one place? So either we're all faking it really well, or we're just <laughs> good guys, right? So let's look at today's BAM Slam, which is uh, titled, Solve Can Be Hard. Man, and I, know, I knew from EOS, because I read the book Traction, exactly what this was going to be about. However, once I read it, I was kind of surprised on uh, the spin. Uh, very, very, very good blog post. I was very impressed with this. Uh, my summary could actually be summarized in one sentence directly from the blog, right? plagiarizing the heck out of the blog, and the sentence is, this may sim be simple, but it's not easy. Now, I can't leave it at that because my band brothers told me I needed to elaborate and do a little bit more, so let me expand on this, okay? Uh, we've done several BAM episodes about simplicity, and problem solving. In this post, certified EOS implementer and co-author of Get a Grip, EOS's, uh, one of EOS's book, books, Mike Patton helps us to see why problem solving can be difficult within our organizations by helping us understand how our brains operate and work and that we sometimes prefer to fight, we prefer the conflict, we prefer to be right as opposed to solving problems and getting things done and moving forward. And the book Traction, which the entire EOS process is based on, it's written by Gina Wickman, they give us a simple formula for problem solving. But, as I said, the very first sentence, the opening sentence, simple is not easy. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. But know this as we move on. Whether it's life, business, health, faith, relationships, or any other area of life, one fact remains true. You will have problems arise. And the OS method of problem solving can be applied to any problems in any area of life. And every great leader has great problem solving and conflict management skills. Brian, I know you read this blog, obviously, all three of us did, so I really don't even need to say that, but I know you had an aha moment. Tell us about that. Well, Mike, my aha moment came when, when Mike went into Judith Glacier's article and you got to go to go over to the uh, the blog and read it yourself but when when he went into that it caused me to really step back and think about it as you know many times business owners and entrepreneurs we get to work with have a hard time letting go of what is uh, perceived as control and after reading this I can even recall some uh, some people in my past that were you know, fairly successful businessmen and women that own companies, five to 15 employees, and they had told me point blank that they like to keep a little bit of tension amongst their staff, and that was one of the reasons they were successful because it kept things fresh, you know, kept the, the things on the table. Now, I'm all for people bringing, bringing new ideas and being sharp and, and all that kind of stuff, but after reading this article, I would like to go back. I would like to offer this article to these business owners to read themselves and see 
how much more they think they could have been successful or they could now be even more successful if they could transcend this human response to to these things that, that uh, Mike points out and get into a collaborative mode where they would be and, and see if they could actually get on the, the, the same page and overcome some of these normal responses so they they could – I'm I'm betting – they could possibly see an additional 10x to their already successful business just by the transcension alone. So it was an aha moment for me because, you know, like I said, people have told me, hey, you got to keep a little tension in there. That keeps things fresh, keeps the, keeps the, the conversation going. And I just uh, – th this, this blog pointed out that mm, maybe not so much. Now, now, Brian, for the listeners and viewers, you're not talking – you know, a total harmonious approach to problem solving. When there's problems, there's going to be tension. When you're trying to problem solve with a group of people, there's going to be butting of heads. But where we need to move forward is by looking at solutions, not focusing too much on the problem and definitely not focusing on being the smartest guy in the room and being right all the time. It's trying to move the entire team forward together. This brings me to Aaron Zambrano's iFit Minute. You're on, buddy. All right, here we go. So what I what I got from this was um, just the, the the responses that people have from stressful situations, and you know, in my 15 year career, 15 year plus of working with people, the the ones that have been the most unsuccessful, or the ones that haven't been successful, or the ones that have actually fought me on the facts, who have fought me on the strategy of how to actually see results, and so I, what. I always say the same thing, and, and these people are usually the ones that are the most out of shape or the most overweight in a gym. And is that a coincidence that they're the most over shape uh, or out of uh, you know out of shape and overweight people? Uh, you know, I don't think so. So I go back to to this formula, and, and I, I say the same thing all the time, but I'm gonna say it in a different way. You know, if A plus B equals C, and you're not getting C, then the formula is messed up. So most people think that they they have A and B both figured out. But if you're not getting C, then A and B isn't right. It's just really that simple. So don't fight the facts. Be open to a new way of thinking. Be open to a new approach to exercise, which which is which is just going to help you see the results that you want. And, and that's really what I get from this: is don't fight the facts and the the, the things that are there. So that's my iFit minute. Now I'm going to send it over to Brian for hit the Brian Kaiser three keys. Aaron, excellent formula. Simplified. We've been talking about simplicity. That is one of the coolest. The I think it's any simpler than that. Yeah, no kidding. I love it. So, sorry to interrupt. B, BK, it's your show, buddy. No, no, no. That was. I, I'm. I'm still. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thumbs up. Ah, uh, the three keys for today in this blog is you know we'll go to the first one and it'll kind of follow in a little bit of what you know Aaron's saying there, but acknowledgement and unwavering focus. I think your team has to have acknowledgement that there's going to be problems, and they have to be unwavering in the focus of the goal of what is the end result that the team is looking for, the company is looking for. If you're a good leader, as Mike pointed out, there's going to be conflict. It's I mean it's in it's in the human DNA to have conflict. It's just that we're just gonna it's it's gonna happen. What you have to be able to do though is acknowledge that there's gonna be conflict and then transcend beyond that by staying focused on the goal. What is the end result? And one way I'm uh, we iterate a lot on this show, Mike and uh, and Aaron. We've we've all said it, and we're going to say it again. Don't be afraid to hire a coach, because a coach can help you and your team get past this point. Because the acknowledgement piece is tough to acknowledge that there's going to be problems, because you don't want to acknowledge in your group of friends and your coworkers, quote unquote, that there's, you're going to have problems with them. But it's un it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You have to acknowledge it. The second one is. Do your business reviews. Hmm. Do your business reviews. Go back. We did another blog, and we broke it down very simply. It was review the game films. Okay, Review the game films. Do a business review. The fact is you know, we're in six months right now. This is a good time. Okay, It's a good time. Do your business review with focusing on key number one, acknowledgement of 
the conflicts that you may be having that are causing the things to not work well or that are causing the things that are working well could cause them to work even better. And not having the outside influence in there, not having a coach or mentor or a consultant in there to help you do that, my opinion, just my opinion after years and years, it's a mistake not to have the coach. The second thing is educate your team and your employees. You know, this blog is a great blog to print out. Go over to EOS's website, print this blog out, and give it to every member on your team. Okay? Every member. Let them read it. Let them understand the human responses and the human side of the things that are going on because that education will help you get to key number one, the acknowledgement piece. And it will also help you focus unwaveringly on the goal of the team and the company. So the three keys, acknowledge and stay unwaveringly focused on your goals. Do your business review. Review your game films. Look at what's working well and what's not. And then do a little bit with a coach to find out are there some things going on within the team that could probably help those things go better or help the things not working actually work. There's reasons for everything. The last thing is go print this blog out and give it to your team. Educate them on these human responses. It's normal. It's a normal process, but the leaders and the good people are the ones that transcend past this and can lead their, their employees and their team to, to the victory. And the victory is that end result, that end game. So with that, Mike, I'm, I'm going to segue right into the Mike Calderwood Business Application Advantage. And, uh, man, this is going to be a good one. Hey, Brian, that was a, th those three keys are really great. And before I get into application, I just want to touch on the, the, the unwavering focus because I think a lot of times we get so hung up on the problem that that becomes our focus and we manifest more of that. As we problem solve, we do need to focus on the problem and the solutions, but we can't lose um, the focus on the big picture, what we're trying to gain as a team. We have to stay focused on the vision, the mission of the company, and the mission of the team. If we lose that focus, the, the problem is going to look gigantic, it's going to be hard to overcome, and we're going to manifest more of it. So there's that. Um, the second thing I want to touch on that you said is print the blog, right? I think that's a great idea. My sister's company uh, back in Massachusetts actually runs their business based on the EOS model. And they did it by buying the book Traction for all their senior leadership and basically having a book study as a team to understand the, 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 the EOS process and try to self-implement it. So there's, a, there's an option for you. My wife's company is now starting to implement reading books as a team as well. So if you really want to go to the next level with your team, get, you know, how many team members, how many key players do you have? Five, ten. Pick up ten copies of the book and start to understand it. And then if you're struggling, you can not implement it. Call EOS. They've got implementers in every major market and they can help you to make um, the application of, of the EOS process a little bit clearer. Okay, so that being said, yeah, the Mike Calderwood Coaching Advantage application. My, my application is very simple today. It's right from the post, and it's right from the book traction, and it's IDS. Any EOS implementer would have you IDS. It stands for uh, uh, Identify, Discuss, and Solve. So today's application is to identify. Make a list of all your business problems, all your challenges, and all your obstacles. That's step one. Make a list. Put them all down. Okay, it's unlimited. As more problems arise, add them to the list. Now, we're not focused on that list. We've still got our more important lists, which are the things that are moving us towards our goal, but work to start knocking off some of those problems off that list, right? Aaron, what ways do you benefit, maybe in your business, maybe with your clients, however you want to approach this one, um, how do you benefit by bringing challenges to the forefront? Well, I mean, you can put this all the way across the board with any challenge. You know, and the first step to any challenge is really identifying the problem. Because without a problem, you've got nowhere to go. If you go look at, you know, I'll be nerdy for a second. You go look at scientific method that scientists use to, you know, do an experiment. The first thing they start with 
is a problem. So you've got to start with the problem first. And once you understand the problem, now you can start to figure out the exact solution that you need. Now, what, and that, that solution is really more than anything giving you a direction, a direction that you're going to be going in. And once you know your direction, you can start building those steps that you need in order to get there. You're developing the plan. And then after that, you just execute the plan. So it starts with the problem. Then it begins... Then, then it's understanding the direction. That tells you the direction. And then you just develop the plan and execute it. Awesome. So again, step one, identify. Step two is discuss it with your team. Okay. Oh, Mike, I don't have a team. I'm a solopreneur. Or, Mike, I, I've got a team, but none of them are going to be interested in sitting down and really trying to solve a problem without us butting heads. Okay, well, there's your first problem. We've identified it. Okay. And this is where you need a coach. Okay, so... Um, after I identify, we're going to discuss it. We've got to have somebody that we can discuss our problems with because a problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that solved it. Einstein taught us that. So in that statement itself, if you're a solopreneur or a small business owner and you're having a problem, it's your level of thinking that's going to need to change for us to solve that problem. And you cannot do that without some kind of developmental or outside help a coach, a mentor, an implementer, a consultant, a, whatever you want to call it, an advisor. Um, if it's a mastermind group, you've got to find somebody that you can discuss your challenges with for you to come up with solutions that are outside your own realm of thinking. And then the third piece is solve. we got to start coming up with solutions to these problems and we can move our business forward. If a problem is crippling your business, the only way we're going to move our business forward um, is to solve that problem. Brian, you're a great problem solver for, for other people, right? In what ways do the techniques you use to help others solve problems help you and your team internally? Or how do you apply your external techniques internally? Let me say it that way. Well, you know, I go back to, uh, to, to my aha moment and, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, and I've been guilty of this. I know that most, uh, I, I could go out on a limb and say we've all three been guilty of this. We have trouble letting go of what we perceive to be control. And what I mean by that is when you come with a problem, and Aaron pointed it out and you pointed it out again, when you come with a problem and your team's having a problem, you're involved in the problem. Like you're, whether you are a part of the problem, you're part of the problem. It's your team. So if you're going to be the leader that you want to be, if you're going to transcend to the level of uh, expert that you want to be seen as, then you need to look for education and information and people outside coaches and bring them in to help you solve that problem because they don't have the same skin in the game that you do. It's not their problem. They've been brought in and they're looking from the outside of the fishbowl in, they can identify things that you can't see or that your mind, because you're actually involved in it, your mind won't allow you to see, and it won't allow you to overcome. So you've got to find somebody outside the situation, bring them in, and you have to educate everybody. That's why my three keys, I said, go print this out. Go print this out and give it to your team. Let them have the knowledge and the understanding of how human responses work mm -hmm. so that when you do have problems and you bring education in and you bring a coach in, now everyone's a little bit more at ease. Everyone's a little bit more open. They're, they're allowing their mind to work through this and actually see that there is a way to progress even though this seemed like a monstrous problem that was just going to tear the, the company or the team apart, it's really not. It's, it, but you've got to allow that person to do that. And that's, that's how I've done it, and that's how we've, we've managed to do things here is we find somebody outside that's an expert in helping us wade through the situation and f identify the pieces and then bringing us back together and unifying us as that team. Okay. That is... Anything else you all need to know? Yeah, that's, that's it in a nutshell, man. That was great. So, IDS, identify, discuss, solve. Let me, let me just wrap this, the, the application up with this, finally. This is simple, but not easy, just like I started out. There's a lot to this. For me, it's the discuss part, right? But you might find you're really good at identifying and discussing, but you struggle with solving. You might find that you're really good at identifying, but you 
your your team can't discuss it. You guys fly off the handle. You go different directions. You might find that you've got all these solutions, and you and and you discuss them well. Or you might find that you're good at discussing it if when you do, but you can't even identify your problems. There's a lot of different combinations here where this gets complicated. So, bringing the problems list is one thing, right? You bring that to the meeting, but that could mean chaos if you've never done it before. But there's a solution. Look, if you're a company that has a team, call an EOS implementer. They will teach you exactly how to run a meeting. Actually, go to YouTube and, and look at EOS implementers in their videos, and they tell you how to have a, an amazing meeting that includes productivity and problem solving and everything. They walk you right through it. It's fantastic, and an implementer can help you. Get over there at EOS uh, Worldwide website, read this blog, look at the implementers in your area if you've got a team of people and you're struggling with solving problems or any other area. <laughs> so that being said, Aaron, what did I learn from Mike Patton? Well, I think you learned to, uh, to to bullet point your problems. And and if you're one of those people that gets really emotional when discussing it, don't discuss it. Just bullet point your problems. Spend more time working on the solution than you do anything else. And so if we're likely to fight and, and, and when we get emotional, then don't get emotional. Don't put yourself in emotional, emotional situations and just worry on, on solving the problem. Emotional intelligence. I love it. Brian, what did I learn from this BAM episode? Well, Mike, you learned that normal human response is a need to feel that you were right. Understanding that you, you have this and it's normal, then due to this very concise blog by Mike Patton, he gave some nuggets uh, of insight that if you can apply them properly with an engaging and understanding and focused strategy to transcend beyond these human responses, you can actually build an unstoppable team that is unified and can truly work in unity, in synergy. And I think that's, uh, we made some really good points. Sometimes that involves hiring an implementer, hiring a coach. I love it. Bam. Bam. This, 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 was, this, this blog was kind of in my face a little bit. I loved it. So this has been another Bam Slam home run breakdown, everybody, where I, Mike Caldwell, along with co-hosts Brian Kaiser and Aaron Zambrano, break down expert business blogs so that you can better understand it and apply it to your business. Cool. Real results. Got to get them. You can look forward to new episodes of the BAM Blog Breakdown each and every Monday at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe for our YouTube channel. Look, if you've been watching the show, we've been telling you this every week. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we're going to have to track you down. And we have to have Aaron, you know. Oh, okay, anyhow, sorry. Oh, I, got, I got a little off track there. Uh, <laughs> remember, all the links for today's show will be listed under the video. We want to thank... Evernote for making our note-taking, collaboration, and organization simple, easy, affordable, and effective. You guys rock. If you like what you've heard, you feel like you need more information to take advantage of the products, services, or any of the things that we're covering on the show, please reach out to Brian, Aaron, or myself, and we will make a professional personal introduction to the person that can best help you. In addition, if you are searching for a coach, needing professional video work, need a marketing message, if you're just having issues, if you need a whiteboard session uh, to figure out what's working well and what's not working well in a particular area of business or life, we are here to serve. So we leave this BAM Slam asking you, how can we help you? We'll see you next time. We're out. See ya. See you later.